Hello, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Pet McDonald, and in this video, we'll be learning the two to four player game CV, designed by Philippe Merunsky and published by Grana and Passport Games. The choices you make in life will reflect upon you, whether it's the relationships with those around you, the career you choose to pursue, or the hobbies that fill your time. In the game of CV, you'll be working through these events, attempting to live the most fulfilling life possible. So, come join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the game board in the center of the table, and give each player one of these double-sided reference cards. Then, place the dice and tokens within reach of all players. Sort the rest of the cards according to their five different backs and shuffle them. Place the three decks onto the board that match these colored spaces. Early adulthood, middle age, and old age. Reveal the first five cards from the early adulthood deck and place them face up into the track on the board. These cards are the life goals. Deal one face down to each player. You can look at your own, but don't show anyone else. Then, reveal more life goals equal to the number of players minus one, and place them here face up on the board. Players will be attempting to achieve these goals by the end of the game. Finally, we'll need to deal out these childhood memory cards. If playing with less than four players, like we are here, we'll first need to separate the bicycle card from the deck and combine it with five random childhood memories for two players, or with eight for three players. Then shuffle and deal three face down to each person. Players will now draft their childhood, selecting one of the three cards dealt to them and passing the other two to the left. They then select one of the two remaining cards and pass the final one to their left. The three memories you now have are kept secret and may be played later in the game. The player with the bicycle, however, reveals it and takes this bicycle token to note that they are the first player. They keep this token even if they would lose the bicycle card during the game. And that's the setup. CV is played over a series of rounds in which players will take turns using their available resources in order to buy cards and expand their opportunities. Gameplay begins with the first player. That player takes four dice and rolls them. If you don't like some of the symbols that you've rolled, you can re-roll any number of dice up to two times. If you roll one of these bad luck symbols though, that die is locked and cannot be re-rolled. Let's quickly take a look at the symbols on a die now. We have health, knowledge, relationship, money, good luck, and of course, bad luck. Once you've finished re-rolling your dice, you'll be spending these symbols in order to buy cards from the board. These cards have a cost shown here below the name, as well as a benefit that they will provide to you on future turns. You may only buy up to two cards each turn. As an example, if I were to spend two health in order to buy running, I would start my next turn with a bonus health symbol, which I can spend on future turns. Bonuses are tracked using these tokens, which you will collect at the end of your turn. Once a symbol has been spent, it cannot be used again that turn, so when deciding which cards you wish to buy, it's a good idea to place your dice and tokens next to the card. Good luck can be a powerful asset. By paying three good luck symbols, you can purchase any card, regardless of what symbols it would normally cost. However, if the card has a special condition, like the early retirement card, you must still meet that condition. Having a lot of bad luck, on the other hand, leads to misfortune. After selecting the cards you wish to purchase, check how many bad luck symbols you have this turn from both rolls and tokens. For every three bad luck symbols you have, you will need to choose and discard one card from the top of one of your stacks. We'll look at how these stacks work in a moment. Now, you will place your purchased cards into your CV. The cards are separated into different types, shown both by the color of the card as well as by the symbol in the top right hand corner. This is very important because each type of card will go into a separate area in your CV called a stack, and only the top card from each type will be active at a time. For example, even though I have these three health cards, only the card on top will provide me with a token. The rest will gain me points at the end of the game and provide a backup in case the card on top is discarded. Your knowledge, health, and relationships are all very fluid. When gaining a new card from one of these types, you may choose to place it anywhere in the corresponding stack. For example, marriage may be very important to you, so a new college friend may only warrant a second last position. Don't forget, you will only get the benefit of whichever card is on top. These peace symbols represent points. The points shown on possession cards are only counted at the end of the game and they will all count towards your final score, not just the top one. Your work cards, labeled CV in the top right corner, will often have a special condition along with their cost, and may come with negative effects as well. 
Early retirement is a great example. The card is free to take, but has a condition in the cost. You must already have a job. As long as you still have early retirement, you can no longer take new work cards. New possessions and work are always first priority, so they will always go to the top of the respective stack when purchased. Some cards show two different types and colors. When you would add one of these cards to your CV, you can decide which of the two types you want it to be and place it into that stack. If you don't yet have either type of stack, you can wait until you gain one of those two types before deciding where to place your double type card. In this case, you will still gain the benefit of the card while waiting. The last type of card is an event card. This is noted by the lightning bolt symbol in the corner. After being purchased, these cards do not go to your CV and instead are added to your hand of cards along with those that you gained at the start of the game. All of these cards are one-time use effects, giving you the listed benefit for that turn only. For example, Piggy Bank would provide you with one extra money symbol for this turn. Some cards will instead grant you a discount, like this first bank account. It allows you to spend one fewer symbol when buying cards of the possession type. That discounted symbol can be of any type. It does not need to be a money symbol. After using an event card, it is discarded face up next to the board. There are a few other symbols you might see on a card. Let's take a a quick look at those now. This die symbol means that you'll roll an extra die at the start of your turn. There are only seven dice included in the game and this is the limit. So even if your cards provide you with a total of nine dice to roll, you would still only roll seven. The die with arrows signifies an extra reroll. So by having one of these, you could reroll up to three times in your turn instead of twice. The joker symbol is wild. A joker can be used as any of the four basic types, health, relationship, knowledge, or money. The skull and crossbones show misfortune. This is what happens when you roll three bad luck symbols on the same turn. This symbol will usually only be on a card if it helps prevent it, such as with this life insurance card. A straight arrow, like this one, shows that you can change any number of the symbol on the left into the symbol on the right. If the arrow points both ways, like in this example, you can convert those symbols in either direction. So you could change two knowledge into two relationship, or three relationship into three knowledge. Lastly, some cards will show an upkeep cost by having a red slash through a symbol. This means that you'll need to be able to pay this cost each turn. And as mentioned earlier, you cannot pay for something with a symbol that has already been used. If you cannot pay the cost, the card is removed from your CV. It's important to note that this cost is paid after checking for misfortune, but before moving the newly bought cards into your CV. So it could be removed by misfortune before you ever need to pay the cost. The last thing a player will do on their turn is clean up. First, slide all remaining cards in the track to the left to fill any gaps. Then, add cards from the Young Adulthood deck to the right of the track, filling in any empty spaces. Once that deck runs out, you'll use the Middle Age deck, and finally, the Old Age deck. If the player to the right of the starting player just took their turn, the leftmost card of the track is placed into the discard pile before adding new cards. This marks the end of a round. If playing with two players, like we are here, the leftmost card is discarded at the end of each turn, rather than when a round ends. Lastly, a player discards all dice and updates their token, ensuring that they have those in front of them that match the cards currently on top of the piles in their CV. If a card was discarded or replaced, be sure to check that you have the right tokens. You do not get to keep leftover dice or tokens from previous rounds. Once their turn is over, gameplay continues with the next player to the left. Sometimes in life, things just don't go quite as well for you as they do for others. If you're having trouble building your CV, you may qualify for social assistance. Each time one of the three decks runs out of cards, you immediately pause the game. Then, in clockwise order, starting with the current player, have each checked to see if any other player has at least twice as many cards in their CV as they do. Any players that were doubled this way are said to need social assistance and may take one card from the track without paying the cost and add it directly to their CV. At the end of a round, after refilling the track, if there are less cards remaining in the old age deck than there are players, the game is over and players will now count up their points. First, you gain points based on the number of health, knowledge, and relationship cards you've acquired in your CV as shown in this chart on the game board. For example, if I had three health cards, I would gain six points. Two knowledge would gain me three points, and four relationship would gain me 10 points, for a total of 19 points. Then add up all the points from your possession cards, in this case, 14. Next, each player will reveal their personal life goal, which was dealt to them at the beginning of the game, and score points based on its conditions. For example, if I was trying to have a sound mind in a sound body, I would gain two points for every set of knowledge and health cards that I had. In this case, I had three health, but only two knowledge, so I would only gain four points. 
Lastly, all players will look at the public life goals on the game board and compete to see which player will claim them. Only the player who best achieved each goal will gain its benefit. In the case of a tie, the tied players will each get full points for that goal. So, in this example, the player with the most work cards, which is my opponent, will gain three points for each one, for a total of nine. After adding the totals, the player with the most points is the winner. In the case of a tie, the player with the least number of cards in their CV is the winner. And if there's still a tie, players will simply share the victory. If you come across any card effects you are unsure of, each is numbered in the bottom left hand corner, and the back of the rulebook has a handy listing of card descriptions for them. And that's everything you need to know to play CV. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.